Unless what? You, unless you're James Hoffman. Unless exactly. Unless your your name is James Hoffman. That's, I think that's James must be making money. He's he's got over a million subscribers, right? I I think that's the only way to make money. I think again, the coffee industry is so small. You know, I mean, I mean, it's not like technology, right? Technology, we're gonna have a lot of gadgets. You know, we can. Yeah, really the the tech ad sense pays. I hear it a lot, but you know, they say pays really a lot is a uh, finance. In the financial sector, if you're doing like financial videos, they say those those ad rates pay quite a lot, like the in the 40, 40 to fifty dollars CPM. That's pretty good. Yeah, mm. that's pretty good as well. I mean, goodness, my CPM isn't yeah, is a teens, not even. <laughs> so it, it's terrible. Okay, so I mean, if you're thinking about as a full time YouTuber, think again. Uh, it's not. You're not going to make a lot of money doing it unless, like Jay say, your name is James Hoffman. I think that's about it. I know Lance does well, but I know Lance has a full-time job, too. It's not like, you know, he does that full-time. Yeah. Morgan, but, I think, does pretty well, though, right? Um, Mor yeah, Morgan is, a, I mean, she's she from TikTok. So is, she's a, she brought oh. our TikTok fans to YouTube community, so oh, okay. she added to it. Because they had that, that YouTube video that came out like last year where they said that Morgan made like 150000 a year. Did you see that video? No. Yeah, there's, I, I didn't watch it, but I just saw the, the thumbnail one day. It basically, it said Morgan, it, that, it's in the thumbnail. I was like, Morgan makes 141000 a year. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty good money. I mean, so that's from CNBC, wasn't it? CNBC? I, I don't recall who, yeah. who made I never watched it, so I, I, had, I don't recall who made it. Uh, plus, I mean, she's a, a barista champion too, so I mean that definitely helps. Yeah, well, I think this is all. I think I mean, this is only just after she won the barista championship, so she wasn't really. I don't think. No, no. Also, one thing, people don't really make money from being a barista champion. No, it's once you win, the SCA or the and the and the world championship really don't do anything for you. But you're gonna have that title. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, I mean, that's a big deal, you know. I mean, yeah, you have to turn it into something. Exactly, the, you know, you the organizations to, don't do anything for you. Exactly, but again, I mean, that is a you know, Brista. I mean, James Hoffman was world Brista champion as well. That's right, in two thousand seven. Yeah, two thousand seven. But man, uh, God, I mean, I saw his uh, competition versus nowadays. What a difference! Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Very big difference now. Day and night. Day and night. Day and night. Yeah, James couldn't win today. No, I don't think so. Yeah. No. I mean, goodness. I mean, that's like, yeah. I mean, how, right? I mean, how can you? I mean, I mean, you saw his presentation. Have you seen his presentation? No, the one in, in Tokyo? No, I mean, for, uh, for the, uh, I'm talking about the James. I mean, like you say, James Hoffman's, can he win today? I mean, I mean, most likely not, right? Because. Well, you know, I mean, I, I said that, that that's really more, I mean, if we go back to what I was saying earlier, it's really about accurately describing the experience. Yeah, he could probably win. You think? Yeah, I think so. I mean, any, any, anyone that can exploit that can win, right? Especially, you know, the, the, and the, and the difficult part that that's that's difficult to reconcile, I think. And this is part of what the WCE was upset with me, the organization that runs all this. Yeah. Because I said this in a public forum before where, you know, there's a disparity between the haves and the have-nots, right? Like, the people that win, and, and because I travel the world, you know, sanctioning these events, I see this on a worldwide scale. It's like, the, the people that tend to win the championships tend to be the best capitalized and the best resourced competitors. The people that are competing, that are workaday baristas, trying to, with dreams of winning, they tend not to be the winners in most countries, especially the more developed countries. Because, I mean, it is expensive, you know. It's expensive, you know, these guys are buying expensive coffees. And, and like one of the things that, that, uh, that we had, an, I had an argument with Lance about this, and he was like, you know, because I was like, I said, you know, someone like, someone like Morgan and someone like Andrea yeah. have an advantage because they have great resources available to them. And, and he was like, well, you know, we don't really have that much resource because, you know, we have a side room with an old 
um, Black Eagle from you know, the Norma Simile Black Eagle three group that has one group broken. And I was like, I, I didn't really respond to that because I was like, dude, you just kind of like made my point is that you have a room dedicated to work in. You have the actual competition machine, even yeah. though it's got a broken group head, you still have two group heads working. You can work on the machine and you have time to train. Whereas a lot of like these worker day braces, they don't have that resource available to them. They don't have the machines available to them. They have to wait until after their shop has closed to practice. If it, they can practice and they don't have access to, or they don't have the ability to afford all of the coaches that a lot of these guys are going to bring in. Like if you get someone like Federico Bolaños or you get like Sasa Stasic, they're not going to cost you a little bit of money. They're not doing it for free. They're going to charge you significant amounts of money per day, as well as travel and per diem and expenses. So the, the investment is, can be significant. And so, you know, there's, no, it's not to say that it's not fair. The, the competition itself is fair. You just have to learn how to exploit the rules and the score sheets in order to be successful. I mean, that's why a lot of competitors are usually like owners of the cafe mm -hmm. or management or sponsored by big, uh, you know, big coffee roasters. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, if but you don't have to, that's the thing. And, and that's the thing that I try to, that's really the intent of my message last year was that, you know, yes, this is the reality. This is the reality that you face as a competitor. But in order to win, you don't have to have all of that. You just have to understand how to, you have to understand the rules and how to exploit them and how to exploit the score sheet to your favor. Because even though they spent all this money, and, and there's a lot of people that spend a lot of money every year that lose, right? There's only one winner. So everybody else has lost and they've yeah. expended thousands and thousands of dollars. Just because you don't have a war chest doesn't mean that you are completely barred from potentially winning. But, uh, but it makes it a little difficult. It does. It absolutely does. It, it, it is a much more difficult battle. You know, these guys are going to bring teams with them to whatever lo location they're flying to, whether in the United States or outside the United States. They're going to bring their own grinders. They're bringing their own equipment. They're bringing their yeah. own coffee. They're bringing everything they need, which all of that costs money. Oh, man, it's not cheap. Okay, it's not cheap at all. Going to Expo, airfare, housing is very pricey. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Transportation is not cheap either. Oh, yeah. Uber's terrible now. Oh, let's not forget the eating out. Mm -hmm. We're talking mm -hmm. thousands of dollars. I mean, we are it costs a bit. Dollars. Yeah, cost it's, a bit. It's, it's cost a bit. I mean, that's why you need to have the the sponsors for sure. I mean, you you, you need that. I mean, if you're a competitor in a, that high level, but yeah. yeah, but I mean, if you are young baristas out there, dream of winning a champion. But in, in in reality, I I don't know how many you know baristas out there their dream is become a barista champion either. I mean, well, there's quite a bit. I, th I think. That, I mean, it's not not everybody's out there yeah. thinking that, but I think there's quite a quite a lot of people that are would like to have that that chance. But it is very, it is a long and difficult road to get there. It is.